Blessings of the Lord come down. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe today we're going to have a, uh, a quick word that will uh, build up on what the Lord has given us last Sunday on hearing God's voice. Hallelujah. I believe last Sunday uh, the Lord has helped us to go through different verses, different chapters, different things of the word. And today we want to speak on the same topic. So it will be the part two. Uh, if you haven't have the opportunity, the grace that to see or to hear what the Lord has already said, I will invite you to look for it in the part one that was last Sunday. Hallelujah. Today is July the 4th. I believe uh, it is uh, the, the nation's anniversary of uh, independence. Hallelujah. But I want to decree and declare that nation won't be independent, that that nation will be dependent on God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need a nation that is dependent on God. Hallelujah. So, whatever you at, you want to agree with me if you're watching, whether now or after, but if you're watching, you want to agree with me and say, I decree and I declare upon this nation of the United States of America that this nation be, remain dependent on God now and forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need houses, household, churches, ministries, businesses, government, administrations, schools, universities to depend on God. Hallelujah. And this is the time for us to get into the word of God. We're going to speak on hearing God's voice. And we will take the book of Acts chapter 13. We shall read from verse 1 all the way to verse 12. For those of you watching, uh, if you have your Bible, we read from the King James Version. Hallelujah. If you have another version, it's all right. But we read from the King James Version, uh, which is what the Lord has given unto us. Uh, so the King James Version from 1 to 12. Amen. Amen. Act chapter 13, starting from verse 1 to 12. The word of God says, Now there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers, and Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and, and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. And Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, Oh, full of all subtlety, subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, Thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 This word of the Lord is a certain word. The word of God as a whole, from Genesis to Revelation. The portion that is given unto us today speaks on hearing God's voice. Um, before I start, I want to just establish one thing. 
Many people have believed that the Holy Ghost is just the power of God. That's what they say. They say it's just the power of God, which is not true. Uh, a power cannot talk. Hallelujah. A power cannot talk. So if the Holy Ghost is just a power of God, then your God, you don't know him. Because the Holy Ghost is not just the power of God. Hallelujah. The Word of God has established how the Holy Ghost was grieved. The Holy Ghost has been spoken to, lied to from the book of Acts. When Ananias and Sapphira lied, the Word of God said that Peter said, It is not unto me that you lied, but unto the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And here we see how the Holy Ghost spoke in the book of uh, 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 this, the, 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 the same uh, epistle of uh, Paul, Paul says, the Holy Spirit speaketh expressly in the latter time. So the Holy Ghost is not just a power around who does not know what to do and then look for somebody to just fall on it. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is God. Amen. The Word of God says that he spoke and said, separate. Now you got to remember one thing. When Jesus Christ of Nazareth has uh, uh, met um, and Paul for the first time, Saul, when he met him, he sent him into Damascus to go to hear what he was to do. And the Bible said that there was a man of God who came, Ananias, I believe, who came and told him all the things he was supposed to do. And from then, Barnabas, who was already a believer of the Lord, Barnabas took him and brought him to the, uh, to the, to the church of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And as they were gathering, the Holy Ghost now expressly spoke by saying, this is what I want now to be done. Now, I want to dwell onto something. Hearing God's voice, by prayer and fasting. Tell to somebody, by prayer and fasting, you can hear vo the voice of God. Hallelujah. The Bible said they were gathering, doing one thing. They were gathering, ministering unto the Lord. Meaning they were not teaching each other, they were not preaching each other, but they were gathering in the mind of God, praying and then worshiping God. So when you say minister unto the Lord, it means your praise, your worship, your adoration, your exaltation that comes to the Lord and that goes to the Lord. You can minister unto the Lord while you are in the gathering, in the corporate gathering. That's the reason why any time a you go to church, you go to ministry, you go to concert, Christian concert, speak, <laughs> hallelujah. Anytime you go to places of the Lord of God, of, of, of the Lord God, the Bible says he is in our midst. So anytime you are assembled in the name of Jesus Christ, your first mind should be and shall be and must be to minister unto Jesus Christ. Because whatever you do, you don't do it unto a brother. You do it unto the Lord. The Lord said, whatever you do unto the what? Least of those you do unto who? Unto me. Amen. So the Lord spoke. The Holy Ghost spoke. How did he speak? While they were ministering unto him. They were ready and open to hear what God has to say. And they were praying and fasting. The decision that God has to take and put upon the lives uh, was a turn around decision for the whole world. The ministry for which God has sent uh, Barnabas and Paul was uh, important for the Bible, for, for, for the gospel. Hallelujah. So he separated and said, and I'm going to read from the same chapter, Acts 13. Hallelujah. Now, verse 1, there were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius, and Seren, and Manahin, which had been brought up with Hero the Tetract, and so. Now, before we start, we see um, uh, clearly that in the verse 1, the Bible said there were certain prophets, hallelujah, not false prophets. Because when it is a false prophet, the Bible identifies by saying false prophet. When it is a prophet of God, the Bible identifies by saying prophets, hallelujah. So those who say that the prophet have ceased 
in a time by Malachi are just liars. I remember one day I was preaching somewhere and somebody stood up and then he was uh, so adamant. He was virulent. He was against. He, he sent messages saying, this is not possible. God has not prophet now. Nowadays there is no prophet because prophet has ceased in the time of Malachi. I said, not only you don't know the Bible, but you fool. That's exactly what you are. And he was, no, he said he has read the Bible from cover to cover. When somebody talked to you and tried to convince you and say, I read the Bible from cover to cover, then you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then as we we're talking, I took just a few passages of the word and I asked him, I was called the woman who was at the time of Jesus Christ when he was a baby and presented unto the Lord in the temple. And name was Anna. And Anna was called a prophetess. Hallelujah. If she was a prophetess, then how did the prophet cease in Malachi, in the Old Testament? How did the Lord call John the Baptist? Hallelujah. Prophet. So if John the Baptist is prophet, how is this that now the prophet sees in the Old Testament? If the Bible says here, there was a man who called, his name was Agabus. Agabus, the Bible says he was a prophet who came unto Paul and said unto Paul, uh, he didn't say unto Paul, but Paul was gathering with the brother. He came, he took a belt of somebody. And he says, the one, the person to whom that belt belongs to, this is what was going to happen. And he described the things Paul was going, going to through, hallelujah, was going to go through. And then here we say there were certain prophets. Certain can be 100, can be 200, can be 1,000, can be 2, can be, but it is at least more than one. Amen. And that man did not understand. The reason why he did not understand is because he said that God told him that prophets have ceased in the Old Testament. We're talking about hearing God. And I asked him, which God? Hallelujah. Which God told you? That prophets of God have seized from the Old Testament. And he said, my father spoke to me. And my father speak to me. I said, mm. your father, the one you're talking about is not the one of the Bible. Because your father you're talking about, if he was the one of the Bible, he would not contradict himself. He has no business of telling you something that he has never said. He has no business of telling you something that is the contrary of what he has already said. So, which God have you heard? He said, I hear God's voice. Mm. Maybe you heard a teaching. Maybe you heard a preacher. Maybe you heard anything. Maybe your own mind. But you haven't heard God. But he was convinced. He was firmed. And I took him, I said, okay, I want you to tell me just two things. In the beginning, when Christ was presented, in the temple, how many people were there, according to the scriptures? He said, I don't know. I said, okay, take your Bible. He went through it. He read, 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 and then when he came in the place where the Bible says, Anna was a prophetess, he skipped it. <laughs> and he says, there was a woman of God, Anna. I said, good. <laughs> now I know which God you pray. Or I know which God you heard. This is the same thing when it comes to hearing the voice of God. It comes to a place where many people do say they have heard God, and yet the God that they heard is not the God of the Word of God. I talk about, for example, Muhammad. Muhammad said he heard God. And that God told him that, hey, listen, Jesus Christ did not die on the cross. That God, by the time Jesus was to be dead... God took Jesus and put another person there. That's what Muhammad said. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he said he heard God. Which God did you hear? Hallelujah. Another one which is a, uh, uh, um, um, uh, Jehovah Witness. They said they heard God. 
And they say God told them that Jesus is not God. Which God are you talking about? Because if it is the God of that Bible, then that God, his name is Jesus, according to your Bible. Now, depending on which type of Bible you have, maybe you have the Bible according to Joseph. Hallelujah. Yeah, because there were one of the guy whose name was Joseph. Uh, I think he was uh, the, 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 the latter sense of, this, uh, of, the, of the last day, something like that. Uh, among, uh, among them, there was a guy whose name is Joseph. The Book of Mormon, there you go. Joseph Smith, I believe. So some of them have a book in which they refer to and a Bible in which also they, 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 they transform, they manipulate. And they use their own book that they wrote and they said their book is equal to the Bible. And whatever they're hearing, they're hearing from their own book that they wrote. The Bible put it this way. It says, in those last days, people will not want to hear what is sound doctrine. But they will rather rise, uh, 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 raise for themselves, hallelujah, preachers. They want to hear God, but they don't want to hear God according to the sound doctrine of Jesus Christ. They want to hear God according to the mindset that they have developed. So how is God going to speak to you if you refuse to let down your mindset? You got to first come to the place of letting down your mindset. And this is what exactly this man has done. The Bible says here. And when. Um, hallelujah. Ver verse 6. And, and when they had gone through the isle of unto Paphos. They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, which was the which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus. Hallelujah. Now that man, Sergius Paulus, did call for the people of God because he wanted to hear the word and the voice of God. The disciples were carrying not their own voice. Paul said, what I preach unto you is the cross of Christ, is a message of Jesus Christ. The Lord told to the disciple, go all over the world and preach my word. Amen. So anytime the word of God says, if they refuse and reject you, it is not your message they rejected, but it is Christ they rejected. If that message is according to the word. Because you cannot simply accept every message because somebody preached it. Amen. Is that message according to the word of God? If that message is not according to the word of God, your duty is to reject it. But when the message is according to the word of God, you cannot reject it. Lest you reject God. So they went unto the disciple, the, the disciple, uh, um, I mean, they were called by this man. This man wanted to hear what God has to say. What was the message of God? But there was a man in the perimeter. His name was what? Bar Jesus. I told you last time, Bar is meant in Hebrew for son. So he made himself being a son of Jesus. Hallelujah. But Jesus did not know him. And the Bible said, he came and he started speaking all the word from what God was saying to that man. Let's read. Verse. Let's start from verse. Verse 6. Acts 13, verse 6. Go ahead. Acts 13, mm -hmm. Verse 6. Mm. And when they had gone through the aisle unto Paphos, mm -hmm. they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus. Uh, uh, hold on a second. I want to break down this one. You got to understand anytime the Bible gives details, it's not just to make a good story. Hallelujah. The Bible never give. Remember, the Bible was not written by men of God. No, the Bible was written by 
holy men of God. It's important to see and to understand the difference between men of God and holy men of God. When it was written, the Bible made it clear that all scriptures is what? Is inspired by who? Amen. So if it is the word of God spoken, the one who wrote it, he did not write his own mind. He didn't write his own word. He wrote what God told him to write. For example, Jesus took a bath. Amen. I'm sure he did. If you don't take a bath, don't count on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus Christ took a bath. But they didn't write that he took a bath in the Bible. Hallelujah. Because that was not relevant for your salvation. Amen. But whatever God has written in the word of God, even the things which were horrible is good for your salvation. When God writes and says that the David, or when he writes, he says Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, it is good for your salvation because it tells you, you will be destroyed also unless you go the way of God. Amen. Good for your salvation is not only the gospel, meaning the good news. Good news is not, should I say, good news is not only good word. Like, like me, like how say that? And like feel good word, there you go. That's not good news. Good news is truth, the truth of God. That's good news. Hallelujah. Good news is not when I come and I tell you something different from what the truth is. That's not good news. That's plenty a lie. So that man, Bar Jesus, wanted to tell something different from what God was about to say and was saying. And Paul looked at him. He said, you who do what? Who pervert the ways of the Lord. The man who was a deputy, he wanted to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. Many times you can be in a place where you want to hear God and God will not speak to you directly as audibly or in a dream or any other way, uh, um, anywhere, um, in any other way else. But he can send you a man truly after the word of God who will tell you what you've been praying for, what you've been seeking for. Like in the case of Philip, Philip was caught up. Amen. By the Holy Ghost. And he was presented right unto whom? The Enoch. Who came from where? Ethiopia. He came to worship in Jerusalem. And as he was going back to Ethiopia, he was in his chariot and he was going through the book of Isaiah. And in the book of Isaiah, it was Isaiah chapter 53. He was going through it concerning the one who was being slaughtered, the one who has been killed, who has been, uh, uh, who has taken the chastisement of our peace was upon him. So he was reading it. And the Holy Ghost took Philip and brought him unto the man. That man wanted to hear the voice of God. He asked to Philip, who is the person, who, 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 who does the Bible speak about? Hallelujah. Can you take it? Can you, can you take it so that for the, for the sake of uh, for those uh, here, Philip was translated so that uh, he can give, hallelujah, the word. Okay, in the Acts chapter 8, let's, is Acts chapter 8, and then he's uh, from... From verse 26. Okay. Acts chapter 8 from verse 26. Acts chapter 8 verse 26. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem mm -hmm. unto Gaza, which is desert. Mm. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot read, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near, and join thyself 
to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some men should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumped before his, his chair, so open he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the earth and said, I pray thee, of whom picked the prophet did, of himself or of some other men. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. Hallelujah. Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture, and he said, and preached unto him who? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is what I want you to know. When Christ wants to do a work in your life, he has three ways. The word that he has already written, a direct communication unto you, or he used somebody else to speak to you what he wants to tell you. I repeat again, when Christ wants to do a work in your life, when God wants to speak unto you, he has three different ways. He can directly speak to you. He can speak to you through his written word or can speak to you through somebody else that he has sent to speak to you. But in the case of Philip, he was reading from, uh, 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 um, the, the Enoch was reading from the word of Isaiah the prophet. And that was Isaiah 53. Amen. And as he was reading, the Bible said that he did not understand who was the Bible talking about. And he had that desire as he was reading, God, tell, speak to me. Amen. If we put it together, that's what he was saying. Because his desire was a, a, a hurting to hear what God has to say concerning this passage. Hallelujah. So that his desire was, was eager to know the voice of God concerning who was the prophet talking about. And Philip came, directed by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said, go near him. And then tell him. So he went he near him. He sat down and told him the one who the Bible speak about right here. The word of God. The prophet. It is Jesus Christ. Right there. The Enoch heard the voice of God. Hallelujah. Right there. It is the voice of the Lord that he heard. Although that voice had sounded through the mouth of Philip. Hallelujah. So hearing voice of God, hearing God's voice is not only you alone by yourself. No, you can hear the voice of the Lord again by three ways or should I say four. Uh, the first one is what? The word of God or the direct voice of God. God can speak audibly as of today. Do you know that? God can speak audibly like you hear me audibly as of today. And I'm not telling you a story. I'm telling you what I personally lived and experienced. In 2013, 2012, 2013, I was in a position where I was so adamant, so desiring to hear the voice of God. I, I did not say the voice through the word, the voice through the... I wanted to hear the audible voice of God. If you say that you don't change, if God say, I do not change, I change not, then the same God who can speak yesterday can speak today. The only thing that change is maybe the TV or the media because in the time past, Many people did not have a workman. You know workman? Amen? I don't know if you knew workman, but workman, in those days, it was a, a piece of a, of a device, of equipment, where you put a, a cassette, cassette inside. And then uh, 
Yeah, and then he, he, he plays, and then you have something that you put in your ear, a headphone, and then you alone, and then you like that in the street, moving your head. Amen? <laughs> so they say, walk, man, because why are you walking? Yeah, you have your head. The walk is man. And you know, yeah, yeah God, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen? The walk, man. Hallelujah. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is that in those days, in the past days, many people did not have many noise around them, although there were noise, but there were not many noise. There were less distraction. They were not caught up by internet. They were not caught up by uh, uh, TV. They were not caught up by whatever. There, there were less distraction, although there were distraction, but there were less distraction. Hallelujah. So, some of them were more adamant to listen what God has to say. But today there, were, there is so many distractions that you need to find your way and then dig your way out of the distraction. If not, you'll be swallowed up in. Hallelujah. So today it is even an effort, a mental effort, a physical effort, a personal decision effort to say, Lord, I need to dig my way out of the distraction. If not, you're gone. Hearing God still exists. In that day, 2012 and 13, I was in a place where I wanted to hear God. I desire to hear God. You see, when the Bible said desire, that desire is a profound and holy thing that is inside of you that speaks unto God without word from your mouth. There are some words with your mouth that you can say, Oh Lord, I desire to see you. And, and it has nothing to do with the truth of your heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. So anyway, and God, indeed, I was laying on my bunk, and the voice of the Lord thundered in my ear. I still need to go back to my writing to know whether it was the left or right, but it was one of them anyway. <laughs> Man. And I heard the audible voice of the Lord. That day, I thought I will die, or I thought I was dead. It was sounding. It was it, it, it was like a thunder mixed with uh, many waters of ocean, like a, 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 a atomic bomb. It, it was it was terrible. And when I heard that, I jumped and and I screamed, "No more! <laughs> no more!" <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I remember in the book of Exodus, many people of the children of Israel, they wanted to hear God. They said, Moses, why is always you God speak to? Are we not also prophet? Are we not also children of God? Why is God not coming to speak unto us? Tell him we want to hear him. God said, okay. Tell them, they want to hear my voice. No problem. Let everybody come and gather at the feet of the mountain. I shall come and speak. The Bible said when he came, there was a darkness. Hallelujah. And the Bible said he was in the midst of that darkness. There is darkness and darkness. They're not the same. <laughs> Amen. He was in the midst of that darkness and he spoke. The Bible said when they heard... Maybe the breath of it. They say, ah, Moses, please, God tell him to, to be quiet. <laughs> they told him, no, no, Moses, just, just God, please speak to Moses and then we will listen through him. <laughs> Hallelujah. They stopped. Hearing the voice of God is not a simple thing. But it is a true thing also. Meaning, God can give you the grace to hear what he has to say through means that he's choosing. And different means. The word. The preached word. The sound doctrine. Dreams. Or he can speak to you directly. For he has not changed. So here. That man wanted to hear what God has to say. He called for the disciples, for the apostles. But there was another man who was a false prophet trying to pervert. So how do you pervert the ways of the Lord? When you come to somebody and you do like the devil, the devil said to Eve, did God tell you not to eat from the uh, not to touch the tree 
the fruit, the tree that is in the midst. He tried to pervert the word of God by using some of what God said with what God did not say. If God says, I want you to lay down. He did not say, I want you to rest. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? The key instruction when God speaks, like when he spoke unto Moses, he said, I want you to what? Speak to the rock. To give water out of it. Moses did what? He struck the rock. Although the miracle happened because the end of it was the children of Israel needed water. And water were very dear and dear unto them because they were in the wilderness. So they needed to drink. They were thirsty. The miracle was the water. But the mean to the miracle was not the same. God spoke, I want you to speak to the rock. And Moses struck the rock because of anger. Why? The people were doing too much. Hearing the voice of God can come in a place where you may not understand what is God saying. But if you pay attention to what is saying, you may not understand. But if you pay attention to do what is saying, along the way you can understand. When God speaks unto you, what he expects from you is a move. What he expects from you is an obedience. Uh, uh, an obeisance. Hallelujah. Being what? Obedience. Thank you. Obedience. Hallelujah. What God expects from you is an obedience to be able to say, yes, Lord. Speak. Thy servant listen. And when you listen, if the spirit of God is in you, what happens when you hear the voice of God is that the spirit of God inside of you already will help you know God is speaking. Because it testifies in you. That's the reason why it is good to cultivate your personal prayer life, praying in the spirit. Because the spirit, the word of God says, let's take the book of Jude. Jude chapter there is only one chapter anyway. So chapter 1 from verse 20. From verse 20. Jude chapter 1 from verse 20. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sacrificed mm -hmm. by God, as sanctified by God the Father. Verse 20, verse 20. You are, you are reading verse 1. Verse 20. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. but, he be, but he beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God speak unto you and I. He said, beloved, build up yourself in your what? Your most holy faith. Remember, the word of God does not describe details simply for the sake of literature. The word of God describes details because it wants to let you know exactly what you are to do. Build up yourself. In your most holy faith, praying in. Can you read again? Read again. Put it back on the screen. But he, beloved, building up yourselves mm -hmm. on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember. There is a key that God gives unto us in order to open our hearing. Whether our physical hearing, our heart hearing, our spirit hearing. There are keys he gives unto us. Remember last Sunday we spoke about the keys that was given unto Samuel. Samuel heard God, but could not receive the instruction that God wanted to tell him. Although he heard God. Did God was the one calling Samuel? Yes. Hallelujah. It was not confused. It was indeed God calling Samuel. 
But when God called Samuel, God has many things to tell unto Samuel, but he did not say it. Why? Because there was a key that Samuel needed to have in order to position himself to hear what God has to say. Hallelujah. Another key they gave in Acts chapter 13, they were ministering unto the Lord. That was a key. And as they were ministering unto the Lord, they ministered unto the Lord in prayer and fasting. And then what happened? God spoke. The Holy Ghost spoke. It's another key. Hallelujah. Another key is also to lay down at his feet. Lay and rest at his feet. By doing so, we say dream. He speaks through dreams. Another key, build up your most holy faith. Build up your most holy faith. I shared with you last time that the word build here is meant for charge. When you charge your phone, you put in power in that phone from another source and build up your most holy faith. Charge your most holy faith by praying, not with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's not saying by praying by the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost, but in the Holy Ghost. Paul will go even further talking in 1 Corinthians 14, I believe. Hallelujah. Let's take the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians 14. Let's read from verse 1. Chapter 14, starting from verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that he may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. How bait in the spirit the how bait in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what Jude said. Speak praying in what? In the spirit. And Paul said, when you speak in an unknown tongue or a divine tongue, you speak in what? In the spirit. What did he say here? Verse 2. It says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him our bit, what? In the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. If you take time to break down what the word of God speaketh when it comes to tongues, and then you go a little further, let's actually take it. Let's take it in the same First Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. In First Corinthians chapter 14, let's, let's speak over here. Let's go in verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 6. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? And, and, and even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, Except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise he, except he utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For he shall speak unto the air. Now, let's break down a little bit. Hearing God's voice. Building yourself in your most holy faith. Developing a relationship. Praying and fasting. Seeking the Lord. Ministering unto the Lord. And all the tools that God has given. Including the reading of the word of God. Including fasting. Including speaking in tongues. And all those different things. Now we are talking about tongues. Hallelujah. 
When we talk about tongues, don't make the mistake of misunderstanding. Tell to your neighbor, do not make the mistake of misunderstanding. In verse, in chapter 12, Paul speaks already of diverse gifts. And along the speaking, the dissertation, should I say, of what he was speaking about, he comes in chapter 14. And chapter 14 was not only a separate chapter, but the continuity of what he was talking from then. In chapter 12, he speaks on diverse gifts. Let, 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 let's go and we come back. So you understand. Let's go and come back. So in chapter 12, I want you to take chapter 12, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Now, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. Go to chapter 10, uh, pardon, uh, chapter 8, uh, verse 8, sorry, verse 8. Verse 8 now. Okay, verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit mm -hmm. the word of wisdom, mm -hmm. to another the word of knowledge mm -hmm. by the same Spirit, mm -hmm. to another faith by the same Spirit, mm -hmm. to another the gifts of healing by the now, same Spirit. Now, I want, spirit. before we go a little further, the Bible says it is given the gift of faith, right? Right? Do you have faith in the Lord? Is every Christian supposed to have faith in the Lord? I want you to help. I want to help you. Is every Christian supposed to have faith in the Lord Jesus? So if to another it is given faith, then I can say out of this that not every Christian has faith in the Lord. Is that true? You see what I'm saying? Let me break it down. We're talking about hearing God voice. To one it is given this. To another it is given this, and to another it is given this. And the word of God says in verse 9, to another faith. So what faith is talking about? That faith that is supernatural that calls you to do miracles and operate into the supernatural. You can have faith in the Lord Jesus, and yet you are bankrupt of supernatural activity. You understand? So there is the grace of faith and the gift of faith. The grace of faith is what causes you to believe in the Lord. The gift of faith is what you operate in as a ministry. They're both faith, they're not the same. Let's go further. To another, the gift of healing. Is every Christian supposed to pray for healing? Can every Christian pray for healing? Is every Christian has a gift of healing? Is every Christian has a gift of healing? Is, is every Christian has a gift of healing? But is healing given to every Christian? Hallelujah. And then he goes further. He says what? What is that? We verse 10. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. Is every Christian prophet? Is every Christian called to prophesy? Can every Christian prophesy? You say Christian. <laughs> As a Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I want to say Christian, which is a French. <laughs> and as a Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. To another discerning of spirits. Now let me break down a little bit on this one. It says the discerning of spirit is not given to everybody. Now you ask you, you, you need to ask yourself: do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you have the spirit or discerning the spirit? 
According to that word, if the descending of spirit is not given to everybody, then you're left with what? That's not what they're saying. What he's saying is that there are certain people who have a specific gift in the descending of spirit where they can go tap into the second heaven. But each one of us, if you are born in Christ and you have the Holy Spirit, the Bible said the Holy Spirit teaches you what? All truth. Amen. So there is a grace of the descending of spirit and the gift. They're not the same. The grace which is given unto you at your birth. In who? In Christ. The gift which is given unto you either at birth when you were born. Because some gift, when you come on earth, you come with that. Or by operating in the ministry when you desire. Desire the best gift. Verse 10 still. And to another diverse kind of tongues. There is a gift of tongues. He says tongues. And the speaking of tongue. No. Gift of tongues and the speaking of tongue. The Bible said the one. God help us. In verse Let's go in chapter 14. Chapter 14, it says, verse 2, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Albeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Amen? When Paul is speaking and then making a, when the Holy Ghost, okay, through Paul, he's speaking, in the same chapter, you can find Two things that can be opposite. In the same, that can be opposite not for you or I, but for those who don't have the spirit to hear what the spirit says here to the church. In the Bible, you can find things one and the opposite. And you think they are opposite, meaning in the sense where they are contrary. No, they are complementary. Hallelujah. So it says, for those who speak in tongue, they don't speak unto Men, but they speak unto God. And in the same time, in the same chapter, it says, if you speak in tongue unto men, make sure to translate it. And then when you go in chapter 13 of First Corinthians chapter 13, over there it says, if you speak the tongue of men or angels. Hallelujah. If you understand it, the Lord Jesus says, These are the signs that will accompany those who believe in me. In my name, they will do what? Cast out demons and they shall speak new tongues. So there is a grace of faith and the gift of faith. There is a grace of speaking in, or should I say, the grace of tongue and the gift of tongues. There is the grace of Wisdom and the gift of wisdom. There is a grace of prophecy and the gift of prophecy. The grace is what you are to operate in to build yourself in your personal life with Christ. In, in that grace that you operate and you walk to edify yourself. The Bible says the one who speaketh in a known tongue, he speaketh and he edify himself. Did the Bible say that? Hallelujah. Can you take that for me, please? <clears throat> the one who is speaking in tongue is defying himself. Hallelujah. It should be in the same chapter. Hallelujah. So the voice, you, you have it? First Corinthians chapter 14, mm -hmm. starting from verse uh, 13. 13, okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Wherefore, let him that speak. No, no, it's not this one. The one that speaks in tongue edifies himself. Can you take can somebody find that for me, please? Okay, verse 12. Verse 12. Even so he, for as much as he is zealous of spirit. No, 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 no. No, no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we will get there. But the Bible says also somewhere that he that speaks in tongue edify himself. The edification is for two things. For the church. 
and for also you because you're part of the church. There are gifts that God gives you, even the hearing of the voice of God, that can be beneficial to the church, to edify the church of God. But for yourself, in your personal relationship, eh? okay, 14.4. Hallelujah, where we at? There you go. So go ahead. Verse, uh, uh, verse 4. Uh -huh. Verse 4. No tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue mm -hmm. edify himself. Mm -hmm. But he that prophesied prophesied edified the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I want you to understand one thing. Paul did not say that you cannot speak in tongues in the church. Amen. Did he say that? Because if he said that, then Paul is contradicting, is contradicting what happened in the first church. Where? How many spoke in tongue there? How many Paul sometimes say he has to speak in tongue in the church? Two or three. Is Paul denying what happened in uh, the Pentecost upper room? Can he do that? Hallelujah. When it comes to your personal edification, to your personal building for hearing the voice of God, God gives you tools. And those tools are for your own A. Jude said, Beloved, build up your most holy faith. He didn't say build up the faith of somebody. Hallelujah. He didn't say build, although we are called to build the faith of others, I'm trying to, you know, break down few stuff. There is where you are called to exercise the gift for the edification of the, and then you are called to live in that grace of the spirits and the gift of the spirit or the fruit of the spirit for your own edification. Can we pray to the Lord when we assemble? Can you pray to the Lord alone in your room? Hallelujah. There are things which are given for the assembly so you portray it to the others and things which are given so that you can edify yourself, charge yourself so that your most holy faith be able now to be sharpened. Let me put it this way. God said, to Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel could have said, yes, Lord, speak. But he didn't. Why? Who remember? Why? Because he thought he was Eli. But who was calling Samuel? Why Samuel, why God did not continue to speak to Samuel what he wanted to say? Hallelujah. But he, he was given unto him so that he can be able to do it. Eh? He was hearing God already. No. God did not deliver the whole message to Samuel until Samuel positioned himself. Did he? Did God deliver the whole message unto Samuel prior? Samuel said, speak it. That servant listen. Amen. It was only after Samuel positioned himself to hear what God has to say by telling him, Lord, do as you please. Speak for your servant. Listen. Then Samuel was given what God has to say. I mean, he was given the, 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 whole, the whole instruction of the Lord. In the personal life of Samuel, he needed to hear God in a specific way. God was already speaking to him, but he could not recognize it. So somebody told him, hey, I perceive that God is about to speak to you or looking to speak to you. Amen. There is God is calling you and God is speaking to you. That's not the same thing. Amen. God was calling Samuel. And he wanted to speak to him of things to come. 
But Samuel needed to have a position so he may hear what God has to say. What do you do? Go when he calls you again. Tell him, speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. So grace that is given unto you, whether the grace of faith in which you believe in Christ so that you can operate in certain dimension, the grace of prayer so you can build up. The Bible said that you ought to pray all the time. Remember, uh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. It's so much it comes that uh, I'm everywhere. Hallelujah. <laughs> Paul, when he first time met Jesus Christ, did Paul speak in tongues? He didn't. Hallelujah. When he first time met Christ, he did not speak in tongues. But did he hear Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Let not make a mistake. The gifts does not save you. Amen. The gift of tongues, the gift of miracles, the gift of healing, the gift of whatever, whatever does not save a soul. Hallelujah. However, when Christ came unto Paul and then gave him that grace to hear him, Paul was able to be introduced in the church of God, in the church of Christ, but he was not speaking in tongues. Those who were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, did they speak in tongues automatically? Some of them did not. The Bible said, they, for they were only baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And they had to send Peter and John to go in that city to lay hand on them. So they may receive what? Hallelujah. Now, their personal relationship with Christ was what caused the church to go to them and to lay hand on them so they may receive the Holy Spirit, which is what? The promise. Hallelujah. In you, when the Holy Ghost dwells in you, when the Holy Ghost indwells in you, the activity of the Holy Ghost is to help you hear and discern the voice of the Lord. That's one. But the other activity also is to help you to pray perfectly the will of God. The Holy Ghost in you is to also help you pray the perfect will of God. Do you agree with me that you can position yourself, pray, and the prayer that you give unto the Lord are not in his will? Hallelujah. It's not everything that you say that is in the will of God. <laughs> Amen. It is not because you say it, then it is the will of God. Hallelujah. But the word of God says there is a way where the Holy Ghost in us can help us pray or pray through us the perfect will of God. For he knows the spirit of God. So the gifts are given for the edification of the church. But the grace that is given unto you, the grace of the spirit, the grace of faith, the grace of tongues, it is for your building. And that grace can be turned into gift when you have the ability to turn, for example, tongues into interpretation. Let me put it some way. <clears throat> in the book of uh, Acts, when they spoke all in tongues, the 120, God at the same time, the same spirit who gave that manifestation to the 120, the same spirit also gave the interpretation to the 3,000. Did he? Uh, hallelujah. Because right there, the Bible said they were able to understand and hear in their own languages. Hallelujah. The disciples who, whom the Holy Ghost came and they were speaking in tongues, they were not speaking in their languages. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Imagine that you have 3,000. How long would it take you to speak the whole gospel that you're supposed to declare in everybody's languages? 
It won't be done on one day. <laughs> Hallelujah. But supernaturally, God has, an, has enabled the children of God, the apostle, to receive tongues. And those supernatural tongues were translated in every one own language. This one was to edify the church. So when Paul said in verse 4 of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the one who speaketh in tongues edify himself, is not talking about the gift of tongues. When he says the one who speak in tongues speak only to God, is not talking about the gift of tongues. When he speak about the faith that to another it is given faith, is not talking about the grace of faith. Hallelujah. Hearing God. It is a grace that is upon you when you decide to say, yes, Lord, speak unto me. Hearing God, it is a grace that is upon you when you decide to make Jesus Christ your Savior and your Lord upon your life. Hearing God, it is a grace that is given unto every single Christian. However, some who have not developed the hearing of God has the impression that for them to hear what God has to say, they must speak to the man of God. Hallelujah. And now, unfortunately, it becomes a disruptive occurrence in the church where some people abuse of that and now speak their own mind to the people of God. The gifts of hearing the voice of God can be like uh, the prophet, uh, what is his name? Balaam. Hallelujah. Do you remember Balaam? When the children of God was coming out of, I mean, was coming from out of uh, the wilderness. Baal called for whom? Balaam. To do what? Okay. To curse the children of Israel. And what happened to Balaam? What happened to Balaam? The Lord spoke to him. Hallelujah. The Lord came and conversed with him to tell him his mind, to tell him that he cannot curse what God has blessed. But was it because he was listening to the voice of God or because God was speaking to him, then he was the chosen of God? Hallelujah. So when God gives unto you the grace to hear his voice, to hear his mind, to hear his thought, it is first and foremost for yourself to build yourself in your most holy faith. Why does he want you to build yourself in your most holy faith? Because in these last days, deception is no longer plain. In these last days, deception is what? Subtle. Meaning, you can hear certain things that will make you believe that yes, Lord, and yes, God has not spoken. I was sharing with somebody, when it comes to the different things that we do, you can pray about a specific topic. Lord, please, da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. And you pray and you pray and you pray and you pray. And as you pray, yourself in your heart, you convince this one. It is the will of God. Have, have you ever been in a situation like that? <laughs> Amen. When you pray, I mean, when you pray, your sweat even goes this way. <laughs> And then you are convinced you are speaking to God. And you are speaking the will of God. And every word that you utter, because you hear it yourself, and it sounds right in your hearing, you are encouraged. Oh, my Lord, I decree and I declare this car shall be for me. For I shall not be in the tail. I shall be in. Hallelujah. So what you're hearing is not the will of God, it's your voice. And when you have finished praying for the thing on which you have been convinced that God has given unto you, suddenly it is not for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
uh, why I'm talking about that. Uh, yeah, the house. <laughs> Something came back in my mind. My wife and I, we were praying for house. We saw a house in a tiny town. We say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bind the circumstance on a, the perimeter of the house. We block every other eyes. We erase it. <laughs> I mean, we decree and declare. This is our house. We walk seven times around. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> we fall down the wall. Of when we was done, two days after they called us, ah, the house was off to somebody else. <laughs> Jesus, what happened? <laughs> Hallelujah. But when we were praying, it sounded will of God. It sounded right. Because we can understand what we were saying. It's like we had control. And after that, we went again in another house. That time, when we entered in, we saw the, the owner of the house who was inside. We said, this is the sign of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The other one, we missed it. But this one, even God calls the owner to be here. So we spoke with the owner. He says, certainly, surely, I give you my word. I will keep the house for you. We said, Jesus Christ has answered our prayers. So based on that hearing of our own voice. Amen? That's why you got to pray in tongues. Because in tongues, you don't always control what you say. Not always. You never control what you say. Because it is the spirit that prayer the perfect will of God. So that you can hear exactly what God wants you to do. So we start praying. And I remember that day, the lady who was helping us to get the house, she said you have to get 1,000 that they call a, a deposit or something. That it was something, something 1,000 we have to give. Now we start praying for 1,000. Because we were certain that this time, God has spoken. So Lord, let the 1,000 fall from heaven. <laughs> oh my Jesus. <laughs> and then, miraculously, we had 1,000. And we were supposed to meet the lady on Saturday, and it was maybe two days prior. So we were waiting that without her, that 1,000, we said we're going to meet her. We, 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 we close the deal. And on Friday, there is a friend, Pastor, his name is Pastor, some, I won't say his name, amen, who came from Virginia. He came in my house. And then he said, uh, we, we, the apartment we were, he said, ah, brother, my and daughter is having so, 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 and so, and so, and so, so, and so, and da, 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 and I need help. You pastor and pastor, why you want help from me? <laughs> you men of God and men of God. Go, go, go ask God. <laughs> why you ask me? Meanwhile, the 1,000 was in our hand for Saturday. Because prior that, we have had the convinced heart, eh? conviction that this was for us. Friday, finally, I spoke to the Lord, and the Lord said, give to him. Ah, Lord, give him the, yeah, so I gave him the money. Now we left without the money to close the deal. Saturday, we're waiting for the lady to come. We did not know. I even thought, okay, we, we maybe, maybe write her a check and tell her we don't have money now, but she can hold the check. And by the time, at that time, and so I was all, already making the mathematical calculation in my mind. Saturday, she didn't show up. She called us. She said, ah, on Friday, the man gave the house to somebody else. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hearing the voice of God is based on how much you abandon yourselves in the hands of God. Hearing the voice of God is based on how much you let him speak to you however he wants to speak to you. And when you hear that voice, the spirit of the Lord that is in you will help you to do as he please, even if what he says is against what you want. When God speaks to you, it's not always what he says that goes within the pathway of what you want. No. Hallelujah. Although the word of God says that if you delight thyself in the Lord, he shall give you the desires of your heart. So what is the prerequisite? It is to delight yourself in the Lord. But even when you delight yourself in the Lord, that you are perfectly in the perfect will of God. And that you know it can give you something because you have asked it, because you are even asking it. Yet, what you're asking can be outside of the will of God, like Christ on the Mount of Gethsemane. He knew that if he has this cup pass away, he won't have to die. So he says, Father, I know all things is what? Possible unto you. So I know the possibility of what you are able to do. No doubt. If it be possible, let this cup pass away. Amen? But he came to a place where he realized that the reason why he heard God or he heard what God has to say to him concerning the cross was he has to die. And he finally understood, not my will. I mean, finally declared, not my will, but your will be done. Hearing the voice of God is what helps you to perform the perfect will of God. That's why you want to hear the voice of God. That's why you want to build and develop your most holy faith with the tools that God has given unto you. Fasting is not something that you use to be uh, uh, in shape. No. You don't fast to be in shape. Hallelujah. You fast to avail yourself to the Spirit of God by killing the desire of your flesh. If God says, my son, my daughter, this are, oh, Jesus. This are what I give unto you so you can hear me. And you say, no, Lord, I will choose this one or not that this one. Then you are not a good son or daughter. Hallelujah. When the Lord Jesus says, these are the things that I give unto you so that you can be able to do my will and my perfect will, you must do what? And you must desire all of them. Hallelujah. And each one of them that you haven't yet operated in should be and must be for you the target because you are growing continually until the Lord calls you back unto him. When you look at yourself in the mirror and the word of God says, uh, uh, they will raise the dead. Up to the day, I didn't raise a dead yet. Amen. So for me, I continue in it. I want to see one time also. But I know when I pass and they say somebody is dead, I pass this way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Because that gift of faith hasn't developed in me yet of the rising of the dead. So I need to press onto it. To press onto it. And how do I do that? By the grace of faith that is in the Lord Jesus. Developing my personal relationship by continually praying. Now, when you come to the place like Paul, as I said, when he came to the Lord Jesus Christ to hear God in the beginning, though he heard Christ, but he did not speak in tongues. But the Bible said, did he speak in tongues finally? Amen. Although he did not speak in tongues in the beginning, he finally spoke in that tongue. And he did what? Speak? 
more than all of them. I don't know how much he spoke, but I can imagine that he could no longer even pray in a Greek or Hebrew. Hallelujah. I can imagine him in his personal life, personal edification, that he was a machine of communication to the Lord. Have you ever been in a place where when you pray, 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 you pray and after you are bankrupt of words? Or sometimes you repeat the same words. Have you ever been in such place? Hallelujah. The difference with hearing God's voice through the speaking of tongues is that when you speak in tongues, one tongue is how many words? Eh? Infinite words. One tongue is how many words? Infinite words. Imagine that your father tells you that this is my phone line in order to speak directly to me. And you say, no, I, I need to write a letter to the secretary of my father. Then there is a problem. That's what the Catholic do. The Lord says, Jesus said, come, come unto me. And they say, we're going to go through Mary, through St. Jigbe, through St. Zegeda, through St. Yusuf, through St. And then after they went through all the saints, some of them are still uh, in the purgatory because they haven't gotten yet to heaven. And, and then a lot of stuff. And finally, Jesus is sitting, waiting for them. <laughs> Hallelujah is the picture. <laughs> Amen. So the Lord is calling unto us to hear his voice. You can hear the voice of God. You can certainly hear the voice of God through your personal prayer, through your personal fasting, through the word of God, through dreams, through audible voice, through the word that God gives to a brother or a sister. But it is for you to be always connected to the voice of the Lord so that when he speaks, you can recognize his voice automatically. Hallelujah. You and I, we are called to recognize the voice of God at all times. We are called to recognize what he ought to tell unto us at all time. Even though sometimes we might be distracted by things, we might be cut off by things, we still are called to be able to do what? To recognize the voice of the Lord at all time. Hearing the voice of God is not an option. Hearing the voice of God is not a, a second hand. Hearing the voice of God is what you need because your father wants to speak to you. Imagine you only praying to the Lord without never hearing what God has to tell you. This is a barren, a, a barren life. A life of prayer is a life of devotion and communication between you and your father. God is listening what you say, but he also has to say something. Or should I say many things? And for you to be able to build up that step, build up that faith, build up that spirit, is to remember that he gave you tools from his word to know how to position yourself, to know what to do in his presence, to know how to enter his presence, to know when to enter his presence, to know where to enter his presence, so that you have tools to be able to hear the voice of God at all times. God does not want to speak to you only a few times. God does not want to speak to you then and then today it's only you speaking. God is speaking all the time. And then he is asking to all of his children, all of his children, adults, elders, babies, all of them, to be able to hear what he has to say. At all time. I want to invite you where you are. Sometimes I tell that when the word of God is being released, it is not released to give you every answer 
to your prayers or your thoughts or your questions. But it is released to give you also foundation so that you can dig up, so you can search, so you can know what is the will of God for your life. Hearing the voice of God is not an opportunity. It is a necessity for our lives, for our souls. Discerning the voice of the Lord is not an occasion. It is a necessity for our lives, for our souls, continually. Use the tools that God has given to develop your inner man, to develop your inner here, to develop your inner faith, so that you'll be able to continually develop and develop and develop. Your reach of growth has no limit as long as you are on earth. Your reach of growth has no limit as long as you live in the body. As long as you live in the body, you haven't have any reach, any limit of growth. The day you have started having less growth in your spiritual life, it means you're either stagnant or dead. Hallelujah. For we are called to continually press towards the goal of Christ. So I want to invite you, wherever you are, to develop the desire, to develop the desire to do what Christ has promised and to receive the promises of God. If it tells you, I want you to dress this way, I want you to eat this way, I want you to sleep this way, you can do all of them. Because you desire to be with your king. So I encourage you and challenge you to seek all the promises of God. For it says all the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Sometimes I share with the brothers and I say we cannot, the church cannot be only a holiness church. The church cannot be only a prophetic church. A church cannot be only an evangelic, uh, uh, evangel evangelical church. Hallelujah. We are called to operate and function in all the attributes and the all that God has given unto us. So I invite you personally where you are. The Holy Ghost, as in the book of Acts chapter 13, wants to speak to you and separate you for something that he has already assigned unto you in the mind of Christ. The Holy Ghost has something specific that he wants you to enter in that he has already designed so that you'll be able to fulfill the perfect will of Jesus Christ. Today, Use the tools that God has disposed for you. Use the tools that he has given you to edify yourself. To put on a different level where you are supposed to meet and enter into the glory. It is possible. It is not given just for the sake of the writings, but for you to live it and for I to be in. For us to live and be in continually. So where you at, I invite you to look upon the sacrifice of Christ and to know that that sacrifice provided unto you all the tools that you need in this life to hear the voice of the Lord. Prayer, fasting, speaking of tongues, reading the word, meditating, dwelling in the word, living in righteousness, seeking holiness, seeking sanctification, seeking purity. All these tools are given unto us so we develop and build our most holy faith in the Lord. God has many to say. that I cannot tell you 
that somebody cannot tell, but he can tell you in a way that is just built for your life. I invite you to enter in new places with Christ, for the path road is even longer. To enter in new places with Christ, they have places that you haven't discovered yet. Seek them. Let us seek continually the desire of the heart of Christ. To fully embrace what he has for you and I. I pray, Lord Jesus, that today will be a day of a differential shift. I pray that you will create in us something different that is seeking after your perfect will. I pray, Lord God, that you will teach us deep things for us to enter in. I pray, Father God, that you will give us to have the desire to desire it, all that you have. Lord Jesus, I pray that above all, we will carry and love and walk in your love. I pray that we will seek and we will desire to build and to bring forth fruits of the Spirit. I pray that all the promises will be able to walk in them until you come or until you call us with you. My Lord, I pray that we not be perceived Christians, perceived believers, but activated believers, activated Christians living like you, Christ. So that on the daily basis, we more and more and more and more discover who you are. I pray that you give us the grace to know you deeply and more and more. Give us the grace to know you deeply more and more. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.